Um, good afternoon and thank you all for joining us. Um, this has been a wonderfully inspiring week in Big Sky, Montana. As United States Trade Representative, I was pleased and honored to be able to host my fellow ministers and introduce many of them, um, some for the first time, to the great American West. Our scenery has been more than a backdrop. These majestic mountains have called APEC ministers to broaden our vistas and plan on a much grander scale. The United States wants to do big things with our partners in Asia Pacific. Strong engagement within the region is a major component of our U.S. trade agenda. Markets of the Asia Pacific are some of the largest and most dynamic in the world, and it's important to the United States that we increase our economic integration within the region. And APEC, along with our pending trade agreement with Korea and the work we are doing to produce the Trans-Pacific Partnerships, is a fundamental pillar of our U.S. trade policy going forward. The United States has seen our host year as a potential watershed year, not only for us as an economy, but for APEC as a whole. We view this as a critical juncture to keep APEC's trade and investment agenda on the cutting edge for the next 20 years. Our work this week in Big Sky has produced meaningful progress toward our shared goal of a seamless regional economy. Together we have taken significant steps toward concrete deliverables for our leaders meeting in Honolulu later this year. We have identified specific next generation issues that we will address together that will make the trade rules of the region reflect the realities of today's global trade environment. We've seen that our trade objectives and our work to promote green growth clearly intersect, and we've advanced a robust discussion on how best to liberalize trade in environmental goods and services. This is one sector in which our economies excel particularly and one vital to the future health of the world's economy and our planet. We've identified clear ways to improve regulatory quality and transparency. This serves our shared goal of making it cheaper, easier, and faster for companies to trade across the region, supporting economic growth and employment in all 21 member economies. And I'm proud that this week we will have our first ever joint ministerial on trade and small and medium-sized enterprises. That work will benefit businesses from right here in Montana to the farthest regions, re reaches of our region. In Montana, APEC ministers have demonstrated a willingness to cooperate to achieve concrete outcomes on issues of importance to all of our peoples. Our minister's discussion of Doha was particularly significant. It was a more honest discussion of where the round stands today. And I especially praise our Director General Pascal Lamy for his very frank and earnest contribution with respect to where we go from here. More importantly, all ministers agreed that we cannot and will not give up, but we also cannot simply keep doing what we have been doing in the Doha talks if we mean to move forward. We instead committed ourselves to a more sober assessment of the next steps. Today's statement by the APEC economies will certainly inform the future work of our meetings, including the Australian Ministerial on the margins of the OECD next week. Strong and smart engagement among the APEC members towards flexible, forward-leaning atmosphere of this forum, this forum has produced real and meaningful results. I look forward to the work we will do together as we prepare for Honolulu, and I look forward to seeing all that we've begun in Big Sky come to life on a much grander scale in the decades to come.